Space weather this week is staying a bit on the calm side. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we do have a few active regions in Earth view, but they've been reasonably quiescent, except for this group right here that we actually have seen a little activity from this grouping, but only as they've rotated to the sun's west limb, we saw a small M-class flare. And then these regions are beginning to get a little bit more active on the sun's far side, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. Meanwhile, the only other activity has been from this finger-like coronal hole. You can tell where it is because it's like a part in the middle of this magnetic hair of the sun that is the magnetic field overlay. But this has been a very thin slit of a coronal hole and therefore it's giving us some fast solar wind that's in a tight beam. It did bump us up to storm levels for a very short bit, but it really didn't last all that long. But we'll have a better chance to get more uh, fast solar wind here shortly. Meanwhile, between the, this small finger-like coronal hole and long filaments. We really haven't seen all that much activity, but we did have some gorgeous eye candy from one of these filaments. Right about early on the 17th, you can see a little poof right here, but I will blow that up here in just a second. Look at this gorgeous filament beginning to lift off. Watch it go, whew, and it just completely twists around. This filament did not come from one of the big active regions on the sun's far side. It was much too gentle of an eruption. It actually happened in a quiescent part, but between two sets of, of big clusters of active regions, and we'll talk more about that. So things are definitely quieting down a bit on the sun's far side as well. So, you know, maybe we're getting a little bit closer to solar minimum. Meanwhile, what we're all, we definitely are dealing with are, is fast solar wind from these coronal holes. This is ongoing. This was that old butterfly coronal hole. You can see it's still kind of hanging in there. It's not really lost, it's lost its shape a little bit. But this coronal hole is gonna be giving us some fast solar wind, believe it or not, right about the 25th. And it's gonna be a bit better of a coronal hole in terms of giving us a chance for big, good aurora, simply because of the size and the location of it. It's in a much better spot. So Aurora photographers, we might actually get some holiday uh, cheer after all because of this coronal hole rotating really into the Earth's strike zone starting right about the 25th and possibly lasting through the 27th before things calm down. And now taking a look at our sun's far side, we can use stereo A imagery again because stereo A is staring at the west limb of the sun. In fact, you can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's stereo A staring at the sun really from what we call the quadrature position on the, on the west side. So the view from stereo A now looks very different from that at Earth. In fact, this is that long finger-like coronal hole I was telling you about. It looks almost like a horseshoe. This is the part that's been giving Earth some fast solar wind over the last couple days. And now this is that cluster of active regions I was talking about that have gotten pretty active. Stereo A has a much better view of them. And as we watch them over the last couple days, you can actually see we're getting some decent firing of solar storms from this set of regions. So we're going to be watching this along with some of the fringe here. You can tell that the far side does have some active storm players. So we are going to be watching when these regions rotate back into Earth view because they're going to be coming soon and the fireworks might start happening again. And now switching to our full sun map, we are using SDO AIA imagery that's here in red for the front side of the sun. And then we're using JSOC HMI helioseismology uh, imaging for the far side to get a full picture of what might be lurking. And as I put this in motion, you can see we have a couple big players. These have actually rotated back into Earth view, but you can see these old, this is that old cluster that gave us a lot of activity just last rotation. And so we're actually getting to a point where we're getting some of these these big regions rotating back into Earth view here over the next couple days. And then another set will be rotating into Earth view in about a maybe five to seven days. And where that uh, big filament was, was somewhere in this quiescent area in here. So it's going to be very interesting to watch as we rotate, have these new regions rotate into Earth view, how the dynamic has changed over this last rotation, because a guaranteed we're going to have a bit more activity and we might even get some big flow and that solar flux is definitely going to start rising. And now switching to our moon, we are now passing through the new moon phase on our way to a first quarter. And by the 26th, the moon will be nearly 47% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, like, I don't know, maybe some geminids, even though it's just past the peak, or I don't know, maybe some aurora from that fast solar wind. Well, you're going to have this bright companion 
so you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. And now switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are expecting unsettled conditions for the most part of this week, and that's because we just don't have any fast solar wind in the forecast or any big solar storms on the way. However, we could get some minor storming starting around Christmas Eve, we'll see, maybe into uh, Christmas Day from that big coronal hole that's going to be rotating in through the Earth strike zone and finally sending us some nice pocket of fast solar wind. So aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you might get a show starting around Christmas Eve. It's hard to say, but you could catch those geminids. That might be a nice little good photo capture for the holidays. Now, as we move into mid latitudes, well, Aurora photographers, once again, we're sitting at unsettled conditions, not expecting all that much. In fact, probably only a 10 to 15% chance of, of active conditions for any possibility of Aurora. But once we get to the December 24th, we could see a bit of activity rise. We may have about a 25% chance of minor storm conditions. And then into the 25th, we could definitely get a bigger chance for Aurora. And that may even last through the 26th and 27th before things begin to calm down. So Aurora photographers, if you're at mid-latitudes, be sure to enjoy the holidays and possibly Christmas Day. You could see some fun. And now switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week. We are sitting in the triple digits right now for solar flux. And this is likely going to rise a little bit as we move into next week because we're going to get more of those active regions back into Earth view. In fact, by about the 24th and 25th, things start may really start rising. So expect the minor noise on the bands right now to start rising a bit. I don't know if it's going to make it to moderate noise by uh, the 24th or the 25th, but we could. Uh, Right now, we're only getting about a 15% chance of M-class flares at the R1 to R2 level radio blackout, and R3 level radio blackouts are pretty much non-existent. So enjoy your holiday, because right now, it, things are looking pretty good. And now switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week. Everything is in the green this week when it comes to radiation storms. We are at the D1 normal range. This is for you flight level, you know, aviators at flight level 360. It's also the S0 quiet range for everyone else. In fact, we only have about a 1% risk, which is essentially a non-existent risk for radiation storms. So you to push that out through the five day because I just don't think those regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view over this week are going to give us that much of a big risk. So enjoy if you happen to have any holiday travel. You are all in the green and this means you flight crew as well as you high risk passengers. But next week, things might begin to change. So be sure to pay attention to those ICAO advisories. So the space weather this week is actually staying a bit on the quiet side. We do have that fast solar wind that's going to be coming from that coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone. So Aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you could definitely get a show starting around the 24th. Aurora photographers at mid latitudes, well, maybe on the 25th is a better time to look. And hey, you could catch the Geminids along with some Aurora. So huddle the family and friends together for a nice holiday photo. And now amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, things are quite very quiet on the bands, on the dayside radio bands this week. So enjoy the DX while you have it because next week's going to get a bit crazier. So make sure you make those holiday contacts as, as fast as you can. And now you GPS users, well, things are looking pretty good on the day and the night side. So as long as you stay away from dawn and dusk and away from Aurora, your GPS should be top notch. <laughs>